Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. I had to steal my wife's phone to make this video, so I'm going to make it as quick as possible. Back in January, I made a video about a service called Web Arcade. Now, this is a browser-based emulation platform that allows you to build and access your own feeds from the cloud. And that's kind of a mouthful, so let me break it down real quick. Essentially, what you would do is take your game files and then host them somewhere on the cloud, for example, on something like Dropbox. From there, you can navigate to the Web Arcade website and then build a feed that will pull from all of those games. And then, once you've created that online feed, you'll be able to access that from any number of devices through a web browser. And so that means you'll be able to play retro games on many places that you wouldn't expect. For example, as you can see here, I'm running them on an iPhone absolutely fine. No jailbreaking, no special installations, or anything else. I'm I'm just using the Safari browser here. Additionally, you could do the exact same thing on an iPad or an Android phone or an Android tablet. And just to be clear here, I am not streaming this in any way. You do pull the ROM file from your online storage, but from then on, it's actually playing right on the device. So that's Web Arcade in a nutshell, but why am I making another video if I just made one back in January? Well, that's because there are a bunch of new updates to Web Arcade, and I think it's time to talk about it again. Ever since that last video, the developer has been hard at work in bringing new features, and some of these are pretty awesome. Awesome. For example, in addition to your typical 8-bit and 16-bit systems, we now have Nintendo 64 and it works great. Now Nintendo 64 is pretty heavyweight, and so the better your phone is, the better the game is going to play. But my wife's iPhone here is a few years old and it's running really well. In addition to Nintendo 64, the developers added functionality for arcade via Final Burn Neo as well as Neo Geo. And probably the most exciting one of all is that cloud saves are now supported. That means you can save your progress in your favorite game on one platform and then pick it right up on another. And so yeah, I definitely think these updates are worth discussing, so without any further delay, let's do it. Okay, so we've already talked about what Web Arcade can do, but let's talk about some use cases specifically to this platform. Like I mentioned, you can run this on an iPhone or an iPad or an Android phone or tablet. Now you could also access everything from just a regular old Chrome browser on your PC. So you could pop into a game on your laptop, move over to your desktop, maybe even do it at work, but you didn't hear that from me. The fact that it's browser based means there are lots of options here. Additionally, one of my favorite ways to play this is on the Xbox. It's pretty awesome to be able to play all the way up to Nintendo 64 without having to actually install anything. And I also tested this on the Nvidia Shield, it worked really well. Unfortunately, the Nvidia Shield doesn't run Google Chrome, so you're just going to have to use a third-party browser, but even then it worked fine for me. Now unfortunately, the device that you do use it on needs a little bit of processing power, so you probably aren't going to be able to use this on something like a Fire Stick or a Chromecast. But all the other devices you see here should run just fine. And bear in mind that across all of these different platforms, you can access the exact same feed and the same cloud saves all in one. So all you have to do is just build your feed and library one time and you're good to go. And I forgot to mention earlier, but this entire service is completely free and open source. There's no strings attached to any of this. Now, the video I made in January went pretty far in depth about how to set up Web Arcade in the first place. And so I'm not really going to touch on the setup process itself because it has not changed since back then. But just as a quick recap, you're going to want to go to webarcade.com and within there, you'll have the ability to play your feeds, build a feed, and then extensive documentation on how to do all that in the first place. Anyway, let's look at the documentation first because I really like the user guide they have here. It's super comprehensive and also has screenshots and diagrams and everything else you could ever need. Now, in addition to the user guide, you're going to see a bunch of tabs up top. And each of these are super helpful. For example, the Platforms tab will show you everything that you can play using Web Arcade. So for example, if you wanted to play Web Arcade on the Xbox, you could go to the Xbox section and it'll walk you through everything you can do, including little tweaks to improve performance. The next tab is the Applications tab. This will show you all of the different emulators that can run on the system. Now, of course, I'm going to just focus on my favorites, which are going to be like Nintendo and Sega games and things like that, but they do have a lot more added since my last video. For example, you can now play Atari Lynx and Wonderswan and TurboGrafx-16, as well as Nintendo Virtual Boy. So if you're a fan of these old retro systems, you might be covered here. And if you click on any of these emulators, it'll walk you through the installation and setup process for each of these as well. In particular, if you're going to be using an iPhone 14 or the newest version of iOS, they've made some weird changes to the operating system that does affect performance with those phones. But luckily the developer caught it and figured out a fix, so you just have to go here to the Nintendo 64 section and then follow the instructions. 
Anyway, like I mentioned before, this is some really comprehensive documentation. You're probably going to spend most of your time creating and editing a feed. We'll do a little bit of that later in this video. But in the documentation, it'll show you how to set it up with Dropbox, which is what I use. But if you already know where some games are hosted, for example on archive.org, you can link directly to those as well. I personally use Dropbox because it's super simple and I can curate my library, but you're going to have lots of options here too. Now another feature that's been added since my last video is the ability to add standalone links. What this means is you can make a link to one specific game within your own feed and then share that. For example, you could text yourself a link directly to a specific game you want to play and then put it on your home screen. We'll also do that later in this video. And then finally, like I mentioned, we have the ability to do cloud saves too. Now for clarification here, this means only in-game saves, not save states yet. Those are in the works, but not quite yet. Either way, this will allow you to save your in-game saves and then access them from other platforms. And we'll also do that later in the video too. So here I am in the feed editor of the feed that I created back in January. And like I showed in that first video, it's very easy to add games. For example, let me delete this Batman game here real quick. And then now I can add it from Dropbox. On that first login, it is going to ask you to connect to your Dropbox account. And of course, you need to have your games on your Dropbox server as well. From there, you can choose some or all of your games. And then it'll process the games. And with any luck, it's going to recognize what that game is and then give it the box art and name and everything else. From there, you can press the play button to just test the game, make sure everything was working well. And yeah, it's working great. To get back to the main menu, the hotkey is going to be select and L2. Now, like I mentioned before, you can make your own standalone links. You have to do this within the feed editor like this. Click Click on the little check mark to select your game, and then within here, just select Copy Standalone Link. Now you have a unique URL that you could paste into a browser or send via email or however you want to share it. And then when you click on it, it's going to open up a web page, which is actually just the game. And so, yeah, there's a huge range of possibilities with standalone links like this. Now, I'm tempted to get into the weeds and talk about more how to set this up. But again, I covered all this in my first video. So let's go over to the new stuff next. To start, let's talk about the cloud storage options. You'll go up to the settings here on the top right. And then under the cloud storage tab, all you have to do is just turn it on. From there, you need to link it to your Dropbox account again. And that's really it. Once it's been linked, your cloud storage is good. Now in the advanced tab, there's a toggle for experimental apps. You're going to need to turn this on for Nintendo 64 in particular. If you don't have it on, it's not going to actually recognize Nintendo 64. But once you have it turned on, you can create a new category called Nintendo 64, throw your games inside of it just like you would with any other platform. And so here I've already done it with 33 of my favorite Nintendo 64 games. And again, you can test the games by just pressing play and making sure that they run. And because I have cloud storage set up now, before I start the game, it's actually going to check to see if there's a save game in there as well. And yeah, as you can see, like this, we've got F-Zero X running. Now, one unique thing about Nintendo 64 games is that many of them did not fill up the whole screen. As you can see here, there's these black borders at the top and bottom of F-Zero X. So the developer recognized this and decided to actually create a zoom option so that you can fill up the whole screen. To do that, back in the feed editor, just go to the edit section here and under properties, you can see that there's a zoom level. And so you can move this slider up as much as you want to make sure that you have the correct size. You can see here I selected 10 and it almost fills up the entire menu. Let's move it up just a little bit more to 12. And yeah, as you can see here, the menu now fills up the whole screen. But F-Zero is really weird in the fact that the gameplay itself was smaller than the menu. And so instead of sizing it to the menus, I'm going to size it to the gameplay instead. And it looks like 20 is the value you actually want when it comes to zooming in for F-Zero-X in particular. And so anyway, if you want to play Nintendo 64 games and you want to make sure they fill out the whole screen, that's the solution there. Okay, now let's talk about adding arcade games. This is pretty simple. I'm going to use games that I've already taken from the Final Burn Neo ROM set, and then I've added them to my Dropbox. There are a couple exceptions here. For example, with Ninja Turtles, you need to have two different files. You need both the original ROM, like tmnt.zip, and then also the two-player version as well, so that you can choose your character. When importing your ROMs, make sure that you only take the two-player version and leave the original one unchecked. We'll also do the same with the six-player version of X-Men. And now, once we've imported all the games, most of the games are going to work just fine. But let's take a second and talk about the Ninja Turtles and Simpsons games, because those are going to take one extra step of setup. If you remember, we only loaded the two-player version of the game, but because the Final Burn Neo ROM sets are typically merged, you also need to include the original ROM too. So let's click on Ninja Turtles here and go into Properties. You can see it has the two-player ROM we already added, and now there's a section for additional ROMs too. 
On top of that, if you're using one of the older arcade games like Donkey Kong that requires audio samples, there's a space for that as well. Anyway, now we want to go back to our Dropbox folder here, and we want to copy the link of the original ROM file for whatever game we're using. Right now it's the Ninja Turtles. So now what we can do is paste in that original ROM file, and then you have to remove the tag at the very end that says DL equals zero. Also remove that question mark. And so there we go. Now we're telling Web Arcade that, hey, here is the original Ninja Turtles ROM file, but we want you to use the two-player version instead. And so now when I start up the Ninja Turtles game, it's the two-player version, which allows me to pick my different characters. If I just used the original one, I would only be able to use Leonardo. And so I know that's a little bit complicated, so let's do it a couple more times. We'll do the Ninja Turtles one next. If I try to just play it like it is, it's going to say, hey, you need that original ROM file first. So let's go ahead and add it. We're going to go back to Dropbox. We're going to copy the link of that original ROM file. Then we're going to go into edit and then into properties and then we'll paste that ROM file here in the additional ROM section. Next we'll remove the question mark DL equals zero and then hit OK. And that's it, we're good to go. So now let's do the same thing with the six player version of X-Men. Again, we're going to copy the link of the original X-Men game, go in here into edit, and then under properties we're going to paste the URL under additional ROMs. We're going to remove that stuff from the back. And the six player version is unique because it does assign the player no matter what. But as you can see here, there is an option to change it between player one through four. Now, unfortunately, X-Men is a six player game, which means you can't pick five or six, but the developers are aware of this and they are working on it. Either way, as you can see here, I picked player three, which I know is Wolverine. And now when I start up the game, when I add a quarter by pressing select, you can see that Wolverine pops up. And so you can do the same thing with the first four players, but Nightcrawler and Dazzler are not going to be available in this option. And so you might be thinking, well, then why even play the six player version? Just play the four player or two player version instead. Well, the thing about the six player version is that it was two screens side by side. And so as you can see, it's like this super ultra wide version of the game and it looks awesome, especially on phones that are really wide. Anyway, it's all going to be personal preference, but that's how I have it set up here. And now you know how to do it as well. Now, setting up Neo Geo is almost exactly the same as other arcade games, but you need to add the Neo Geo BIOS. To do this, you're going to want to edit your feed and then go into properties. And then here you want to paste in the URL of your Neo Geo BIOS. Again, I have it stored on my Dropbox. And so all I had to do was just paste the link right here. And that's it. All I had to do then was create my category of Neo Geo games, import all of the games, and then they all start up just fine. If you don't have the Neo Geo BIOS, it will give you an error, but as you can see here, it's running great. Now, after you've made changes to your feed like I have here, you're gonna have to re-export it so that you can access all of these new changes. So once you have everything nice and working and you're ready to go, you wanna click on the export button here on the left. You now have the ability to export to a zip or a text file, but we're just gonna use the default JSON file because that's what I prefer. Now, once I've saved that to my computer, I can go back to my Dropbox folder. And as you can see, I have my old JSON file right here. And so all I have to do now is upload the new file and it'll replace the old one while keeping all of my files and links intact. And this essentially is the URL of the feed that we're going to load in Web Arcade. First thing we're going to do here is copy it, and then we're going to make it shorter so that we can use it. There's a couple things we need to change here within Dropbox in particular. For example, we have to remove the question mark DL equals zero. And we have to change dropbox.com to dl.dropboxusercontent.com instead. Again, you only have to do this one time, but I'm walking you through it just so it makes sense. From there, you want to go to a URL shortener website. I prefer tiny.cc. And from there, you can paste in that long Dropbox URL and then also make a custom link right here. I'm not going to show this stuff so that way you guys don't have access to my feed. Either way, that's the process to shorten the URL from the Dropbox one to something a little bit more manageable. And now from your feed player, which you could do on your phone or your web browser, whatever you want to do, you would go into categories and then add your feed via URL. This is where you're going to type in that shortened URL. Once you press OK, it's going to load up your feed and now you're good to go. You'll only have to do this one time per system that you're using. So here I've done it on my web browser, but I would have to do the same on my phone and so on and so forth. Now, if you're going to be using an iPhone, then you're going to want to use the Safari browser to open this up. Once it's loaded, you'll have to press the up arrow on the menu bar and it'll bring up this sharing profile here. Within this window, if you scroll down a bit, you'll have an option to add to home screen. Once you select that, it's going to make an app icon on your homepage. And so then you basically have an app image of Web Arcade directly on your phone. Now, once you've loaded this up onto your device, be it your phone or your tablet, there are a couple things you're going to want to do. First, go into the settings section on the top right and then tap over to cloud storage. Make sure this is enabled and then also link your Dropbox account. You're going to have to sign in just like you did that first time as well. But once you've done this one time, you're good to go. Now, if we go back into the settings, you can see that cloud storage is now linked. 
Now also in the settings menu, you want to tab over to the right under advanced settings. And then here also make sure that you turn on experimental apps. This is going to be important so that you can see Nintendo 64. Once you make that change, it's going to make you reset your web arcade. But as you can see now, I have my Nintendo 64 feed right here. And so now I can browse through all my Nintendo 64 games and start them up as well. And because I already set up that cloud saves feature, I can now actually access the save game that I have for Banjo-Kazooie. And so just like that, I'm jumping right back into my game that I started on a different platform. Now there's a few other things I could still do. For example, I could zoom in on the image to make it fill up the whole screen. But either way, I'm super happy with how this looks. And like I mentioned, you want to press the select and L2 button to get back into the menu. You can also just tap on the screen and it'll bring up the menu as well. And so yeah, as you can see here, I also have the cloud saves working on Super Mario World. This is basically going to work really well with any game that uses in-game saves. So a game like Metroid on the original Nintendo isn't going to work because that uses passwords, but something like Legend of Zelda will. And I gotta say, I'm super impressed with the implementation of arcade games as well. Final Burn Neo is mostly focused on beat-em-ups and fighting games, and so it's not quite as robust as like a MAME ROM set, but all the same, there's a ton of games you can access here. And look at how nice the six-player version of X-Men looks right here on the phone. It's definitely a really cool experience. And yes, this supports multiplayer as well, so if you wanted to hook up another Bluetooth controller, this would work. Now, the developers spent a lot of time getting these arcade games just right. For example, if you pause the game and go into the settings, under the gamepad controls, you can see that all the games have been mapped correctly as well. For example, with the Mortal Kombat games, all the buttons make sense. The high punch is above the low punch, high kick below the low kick, and the block buttons are the shoulder buttons, so it's super helpful and handy. Same thing with the Capcom 6-button arcade games. These are all mapped like they were on the original Super Nintendo controller. So the shoulder buttons will be your heavy punch and kick, and then your face buttons will be the light and medium options too. And finally, probably the coolest thing here is the aspect ratio will adjust on the fly. And so if you want to play a vertical arcade game, all you have to do is just hook up a Bluetooth controller and then make your phone vertically oriented. And just like that, you can play vertical shoot 'em ups on your phone and they look gorgeous. Now, speaking of Bluetooth controllers, in addition to using something like a telescopic controller like the Backbone, you could also just use any old Bluetooth controller you wanted. Personally, I really like the 8-Bit Do 2. This thing is just so small and pocketable that you can take it with you. And given the fact that for the Backbone, you have to take the phone out of its case, this might be a more ideal solution for you. And given how small the Zero 2 is, you can throw it in your pocket or your backpack or your purse, and you can just grab it when you want to start playing some games. And the battery on this lasts a long time, up to eight hours, which is pretty impressive. And so yeah, I think these added features are really awesome. The ability to use Bluetooth controllers and have cloud saves as well means that you can jump from platform to platform very seamlessly. Now the other thing you can do is actually make an app image on your phone specific to that game. Let me show you how to do that. We're going to go back to Web Arcade. We're going to go into the Build section or the Feed Editor. And then from here, you want to go into the menu and then import and then add your feed URL. If you remember, this was the tiny.cc one that we had earlier. From here, you can go through and browse whatever game it is you want to actually make a specific app image. For this example, we'll go into Super Nintendo and Chrono Trigger. We'll select it here, go into the menu, and then copy the standalone link. We did this earlier, but we didn't do it directly on a phone. From there, we can paste it into our phone and it's going to load that game up like it did with Batman earlier. And now, just like we did with Web Arcade altogether, we can actually add this as an app image. So we'll press that up arrow, we'll scroll down here, and then select Add to Home Screen. It's going to ask us the name, and we can change it to whatever we want. I'm just going to make it Chrono Trigger with no USA. And bam, just like that, it's now on my home screen of my phone. And so now I have a direct link to Chrono Trigger anytime I want to open it up without having to open up Web Arcade either. And if you go into the settings here, you can also link this one to Cloud Storage, and we can have cloud saves and everything else. And so think about that. You could play this game on your TV, on your Xbox, then move over to your phone, and vice versa. In fact, I've done the same thing on my wife's phone where I added a Dr. Mario app. Now, she still hasn't quite found the perfect Bluetooth controller for her needs. She finds the 8-bit Doe ones to be a little bit too small, and basically all the other ones to be a little bit too big. So if you have a favorite small Bluetooth controller, let me know in the comments because I'd love to check it out. Now, in addition to playing Web Arcade on your phone or on your PC through a web browser or even through the Xbox, one of my favorite use cases is actually on my iPad. And that's because the aspect ratio of an iPad is a lot taller than it is on a phone. What that means is that the 4x3 content games that you'll likely be playing on this are going to look gorgeous on this machine. 
And so if you can imagine, you'll be able to play your favorite Nintendo or Super Nintendo or even Nintendo 64 games directly on your iPad without having to do any sort of configuration or setup. Literally, all you have to do is use Safari to navigate to Web Arcade, then add your feed URL and you're good to go. Personally, something I've been thinking about doing is going through a season of Tecmo Super Bowl using Web Arcade. Because this game used in-game saves, that means I can play one game on my phone, then move over to the iPad for a different game, and then by the time I'm on week three, I could jump over to the Xbox and vice versa. Either way, there's some potential here to have a very seamless gameplay experience for all your favorites. And Nintendo 64 looks really good on this thing too. Now I wouldn't recommend using the 8-bit Doe controller here because I think the D-pad's a little bit awkward for these games. But if you have something with analog sticks, it'll work great. And so yeah, in addition to accessing Web Arcade from your phone or a web browser on your PC or the Xbox, I think the iPad's a great solution as well. Anyway, that's about it for this video and let me know what you think in the comments below. I think this service has a ton of potential and I can't wait to see what you do with it. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.